What's going on, smart people? Welcome back to... What am I calling this? Miscellaneous Sundays. No, I don't know if I'm going to stick with that. You know, I was doing research earlier today. There's this, this integral that I just haven't been able to solve. Actually, it's, it's 72 integrals that I haven't been able to solve. That's besides the point. I'm not going to show it to you guys yet. Maybe once I get a little bit more progress done with it. Uh, if you're interested, basically it has to do with a Feynman diagram that corresponds to an integral. And in order to solve it, you use Feynman parameters to simplify a loop integral. And then but that comes at the price of having more integrals to solve that I haven't been able to do. And then I have to regularize it somehow. But So it's, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. But I got a package that made me excited to open it. And I thought maybe you guys would be interested in it as well. Because inside this package is probably the most iconic and infamous textbook associated with graduate level physics. Some of you probably already know what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and see what it is. It's a nice knife. Okay, let's see here. Classical Electrodynamics by Jackson. Rumor has it, if you put this book up to your ears, you can hear the crying of the grad student who owned this before you. This is actually in really, really good condition. Thanks, Seattle Goodwill Industries. Oh my gosh. So I figured um this is this is like the textbook for graduate level electrodynamics. What's funny is that there isn't a grad student out there who hasn't bitched about it in the same breath. It's like a rite of passage, I think. Like it's not inherently of anyone's favorite book or even a book that people would say is just like a really good book as far as who I've talked to about it. But it's like they had to go through it, so so do you. So I thought maybe we'd go through what it covers. It actually I'm going to take some pictures of this and then put it up on the screen so that you can see, you know, maybe like the chapters that it has and whatnot. Maybe what would be a good idea is we could compare Griffith's E&M and the, the Table of Contents, uh, which is just like the famous undergraduate textbook for electrodynamics, with Jackson E&M, the famous textbook for graduate electrodynamics, and we can see how they're different. So if you go to the front page of Griffith's, you have the formula sheet that always tells you all of those, like, the divergence, curl, and gradient, and the different coordinate systems, and vector identities. And it looks like for uh, for Jackson, it has relatively the same thing. That's kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I did download the, uh, the Jackson book for PDF a few years ago, just because I was interested in it. I think I, I was in E&M at the time for undergrad. I was like, how different could graduate level be? And I think I got through some of the first chapter. I think the first chapter is all about Green's functions or something like that. But uh, if we go over to the first, let's go to the table of contents for Griffiths. Griffiths has over 50 pages of just math review. Really, I think that that's part of what makes Griffiths such a revered textbook and something that everyone swears by because it's relatively self-contained. The math that you need to do the to, to actually go through the subject is gone through in the beginning of the book, which is cool. So chapter one of Griffiths, we've got vector analysis. Let me move my coffee. Let's go to Jackson. So the first one, uh, Maxwell's, <laughs> page two, Maxwell's equations in vacuum. So it looks like, oh, it's introduction. So let's go to chapter one. It looks like Jackson is just shifted up one as far as when it gets to the material. You know, I'll get comments sometimes if I go over what we're doing in quantum mechanics or classical and they'll be like, oh, you guys, I did that in undergrad. It's like, yeah, no shit. but. Remember that thing that you're neglecting to talk about in undergrad? That's when you cover it is in grad school. So I, I suspect that a lot of the sections in these books are going to be more or less one-to-one. -one. If it's in Griffiths, it's going to be in Jackson. Maybe Jackson will have a little bit more. Uh, but a damn sure will be like looking at it under a microscope, looking at that subject. You'll see a lot of the, the subtleties of it. So, you know, chapter one, it goes over in Griffiths what you would expect it. Sorry, chapter two with like introductions to electric fields, Gauss's law, uh, electric potentials, work energy, and it looks like that's just chapter one of Jackson, except for Jackson gets into Green's functions, which I don't remember Griffiths ever touching on, because uh, I remember going over through Jackson in undergrad and being like, what the hell is a Green's function? So, looks like you might use more sophisticated techniques, then you go into the boundary value problem, so method of images, I remember speaking to some grad students when I was still at ODU in undergrad, and we were doing method of images in undergrad E&M, and they were doing method of images in graduate E&M, 
It was like, oh, we're doing that, but their geometries of what they had to use method of images to solve was so much more um, of a pain in the ass than what we had to do. Ours was like a flat conductor, and then where's the image charge going to be? Theirs was like spherical with a hole in it or something like that. I don't, I don't quite remember. But their problems just looked so much harder. And I think um, it's, it's a harder material that Jackson probably covers, and it might be worse explanations. Because, I mean, if you have 800 pages worth of material, I wonder how much of it is trivial and left as an exercise to the reader. But uh, it looks like you continue boundary value problems in Chapter 3, then the multipole expansion, Chapter 4, uh, magnetostatics, so getting into magnetism in 5, time-varying fields, so Faraday's Law in 6, and I'm skipping a whole bunch of stuff. This is just, I mean, look at it here. There's just so many subsections. I mean, in the boundary value, that's where you get into spherical harmonics. At least in my ENM and undergrad, we didn't do spherical harmonics in ENM. Our professor was like, you'll get to that when you get to graduate ENM. I guess they were trying to save us from something, which is, that can't be it because we still did spherical harmonics and quantum mechanics, so I don't know. But yeah, it's definitely a thing here. Um, Faraday's Law, Pointing theorem, so all that time varying fields, Maxwell's equations, conservation law starts in chapter six. Where do you get to Maxwell's equations and Griffiths? So Maxwell's equations are in chapter seven. So yeah, it really is just like shifted up. So Jackson was like, screw the math review and let's make it harder. Also, 800 pages, but I will explain less. Good luck. <laughs> uh, chapter seven, plane wave electromagnet. Plane electromagnetic waves and wave propagation, so probably getting into the wave equation, which means that we're probably close to relativity, I would assume. Uh, reflection, internal reflection, propagations, uh, maybe not. Waveguides and resonance cavities, that's another thing that I never covered in undergrad e &M. I know Griffiths has a section on waveguides, uh, well, like five pages, whereas Jackson's is like 50 pages. And I've heard horror stories about the waveguide section. You guys have probably seen that one video where it's like, if Hitler took Jackson e &M. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting, and I'm expecting nothing less this next semester. Simple radiating system, scattering and diffraction. Uh, perturbation theory of scattering. I never did perturbation theory in e &M. Magnetohydrodynamics and plasma physics. That sounds pretty freaking cool. Introduction and definitions. Uh, magnetic diffusion, viscosity, pressure, flow. I wonder, it sounds like it would get into like things like the stress tensor, right? I would imagine, but maybe not. Uh, and then chapter 11 goes into the special theory of relativity. So that's something that Griffiths also does. I think it's chapter 13, chapter 12? Chapter 12. Yeah, electrodynamics and relativity. So it has all of that in one chapter. Uh, special theory of relativity. And it looks like, so it looks like Griffiths does all of relativity in one chapter, which spans about 70 pages. And Jackson does relativity in two chapters, and that spans uh, over 100 pages. So, so it's got one chapter on just relativity, so it's got Lorentz transforms, velocity addition, infinitesimal generators, kinematics. So it looks like just regular relativity, not applied yet to e &M. And then chapter 12 is dynamics of relativistic particles, so that definitely is. So I'd imagine chapter 12 is where you see things like, um, I don't know, the field strength tensor, Maxwell's equations from Coulomb, maybe like that whole uh, simplifying Maxwell's equations into the two equations in terms of the field strength tensor and its dual. It has to do that. I mean, if Griffiths does that, I think Griffiths did that, then this does too. Oh, I would also imagine that this has a lot of stuff um, pertaining to accelerator physics. Because if you look at people who write accelerator papers, they always cite Jackson. So I'm sure this is a big thing for accelerator physicists. Um, but especially things like um, radiation. Yeah, yeah, that has to be in here. Uh, Particle drifts, adiabatic invariance of flux. That goes into st more stuff than I thought it would for the special relativity. Lagrangian for the electromagnetic field. That would be really cool if it went over like um, quantization of the electromagnetic field, but considering the name of the book is classical electrodynamics, I doubt that's gonna happen. Chapter 13, collisions between charged particles, energy loss and scattering, radiation and moving charges. There we go. So 
what do we got? Lamar's formula in its relativistic generalization, <clears throat> angular distribution of radiation, distribution in frequency and angle, Thomas scattering of radiation, yeah. Bremsterlung method of virtual quanta. That sounds like it would be virtual quanta. Hmm. Um, what else? Screening effects. Yeah, a lot of these words sound sound quanta me because when I see virtual quanta, I think of like internal lines in, in Feynman diagrams. When I hear screening, I think of like how QED, quantum electrodynamics, becomes less perturbative at higher energies, and it's the opposite effect for quantum chromodynamics, where quarks become asymptotically free. Uh, Bremster lung as the scattering of virtual quanta. Sounds pretty cool. Multipole fields, so multiple expansion starts here. I would have imagined, I would have thought that would come up before chapter 16. I must have missed something. Yeah, chapter 4. So this must be way more advanced. -er. What else? Th so we got one more chapter radiation damping self fields what is up with these quantum sounding words self field sounds like i don't know self energy or something i'm just super ignorant and i'm attaching meaning to things i know nothing about <laughs> radiative reaction force from conservation of energy covariant definitions of electromagnetic energy and momentum oh i bet that's the uh energy momentum tensor we'll have to check that out integral differential equations of motion that sounds pretty cool so this is definitely a comprehensive book. I mean, it's over 800 pages, whereas Griffith's is, that's close to 600, so it's, yeah. I'm excited to get into this book. I haven't had e &M in like three years. I'll be jumping back into it. Let's see, on the qualifying exam, e &M was my weak point. So hopefully making it through Jackson e &M will better prepare me for the qualifying exam next time around. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I just wanted to open up this book. It seemed like a cool a cool one to go through. If you've taken Jackson e &M, actually, yeah, let me know in the comment section what your experience was so that we can all, all see what to expect. Um, and I'll see you guys there.